Treasurer? Good morning, Lisa. Lovely to be with you. Look, I want to kick off with the talk about this vaccine before <laughs> we get into the economy. The two are actually probably related. What does it mean for Australia when we absorb the news coming out of the UK this morning? Well, certainly this is very encouraging news, uh, Lisa. Obviously, the, uh, the vaccine trials have been uh, going in the right direction and uh, this is confirmation um, that it will be rolled out in the United Kingdom. Obviously, their situation is somewhat different to Australia's. They've had more than a million infections, nearly 60,000 deaths. Uh, we um, have the vaccine going through our own uh, regulatory approval process and the Health Minister has said that he expects that process to conclude include uh, by the end of January and if the vaccine is found to be uh, safe and effective then it will be rolled out by March but certainly uh, we're very hopeful about the vaccine and uh, Greg Hunt as the health minister has recently spoken uh, to the CEO of Pfizer here in Australia. What does it do to the outlook for the bottom line having uh, a successful vaccine announced now in the UK jabs next week? Well, the economic assumption in the budget was that a vaccine would be available to roll out across the country by the end of next year. But we also had a scenario in the budget that if a vaccine was rolled out six months earlier, um, that would boost the economy by $34 billion. So that's obviously a, a very promising number, but there's a long way to go uh, between now and then. Uh, but having a vaccine will be a big boost, not just to the Australian economy, but to the international economy, because because so many countries are now going through a second wave. Well, the RBA governors warned the recovery will be bumpy, mm. uneven, drawn out. What does that look like for people who are watching and listening to you this morning? Well, there'll be some sectors in the economy, uh, like aviation, like tourism, that will continue to do it tough because of the international borders being closed. Uh, there are other sectors like hospitality, recreation, hotels, cafes, uh, restaurants that are coming back strongly as the restrictions are eased. Obviously, Victoria, as a quarter of the national economy, uh, is critically important. And the fact that the virus has been brought under control in Victoria does augur well for the economic recovery. So I think yesterday's numbers should give people a lot of confidence and hope about the future. Uh, we have performed better on the health and economic front than nearly any other country in the world. And the 3.3% increase in the September quarter was the single largest increase in quarterly GDP since 1976. And it was driven by that increase in household consumption. Yeah, and it was taken that... before the budget as well. And where, I mean, look, yes, granted, as Michael was just saying, it's better to have an increase and see the economy improving, but you're coming from a very low base and a lot mm -hmm. of the money being spent, that big jump in household consumption, which makes up 60% mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. Australian economy, uh, it's job keeper, job seeker money. What happens when that runs out? Well, it's been the expectation and the forecast in the budget that the unemployment rate will continue to trend down next year, even as JobKeeper comes off. Our principle has always been going into this crisis that um, those economic supports would be temporary, they would be targeted, they'd be scalable, they'd be proportionate and they would all also use existing systems. And that's what JobKeeper has been. And so it's always been our intention that as that uh, payment comes off, other economic supports would take effect. And as you know, we've legislated through the Parliament tax cuts for more than 11.5 million Australians. We've also legislated the JobMaker hiring credit, which will provide support to employers who take on younger people who have been uh, unemployed. Uh, and there are a host of other measures, including business investment incentives, which will particularly support small business. So Tre there's a lot there that will support the economy when JobKeeper ends. Treasurer, I want to ask you about China. We don't have a lot of time left. Mm -hmm. Anthony Albanese says the government is presiding over a complete breakdown of the relationship. Overnight, we learned that WeChat's removed the uh, message from the Prime Minister that was meant to try and help this situation. Um, how bad is this? How do we break the impasse? Well, it's certainly a very challenging uh, situation and what the Prime Minister did in his WeChat message uh, before it was disappointingly uh, deleted uh, was that he made it very clear that Australia is proud of its servicemen and women uh, who wear the uniform, that we've established a transparent process to, to deal with those matters and despite the challenges in the bilateral relationship in no way diminishes our great deal of respect and admiration for the Chinese Australian community but also the people of China. So 
So the China-Australia bilateral relationship is critical. Uh, it's our number. Are you China's presiding own... over a complete breakdown in that relationship, as Anthony Albanese says? Well, I'd like to know, if, if the Labor Party want to play politics with this, it's only fair that they explain which of the 14 uh, grievances that China has listed that they, that they would uh, back down on. I mean, when it comes to a free press, um, that goes to the heart of our identity and our, our society. When it comes to a democratically elected pa a parliament and the ability of parliamentarians to speak their mind, um, that's also at the heart of our, our democracy. When it comes to uh, foreign investment and putting in place protections for the national interest, I'm sure they have bipartisan support. And when it comes to uh, other elements of national security and foreign interference, what we have done is try to defend and preserve and enhance the national interest, yes. as you'd expect us to do. Yeah. Uh, Treasurer, we'll have to leave it there, but thanks for your time. Thank you.